Hello friends! So you want to set up Accurate Rip for exact audio copy, but for some reason you can't get this pop-up box to appear. Don't worry, it's more common than you think. I'm going to take you through how to set it up in a few minutes, as well as why exactly you need to set it up in the first place. First and foremost, why do you need to set up Accurate Rip and what does it actually do? To put it simply, Redbook Audio CDs, which are the type of CDs that you're going to be ripping, have a specific number of samples per track, and your CD drive will start reading these samples at a specific value. To compensate, we have to adjust our offset by either a positive number of samples or a negative number of samples. Accurate Rip finds the offset value for you, then it automatically sets that value. In my case, as you can see on screen, we have to compensate by six samples, so my offset is plus six. This means you're enabling Accurate Rip specifically to set your offset value correctly. That's it. So if you're able to manually set your offset value yourself, technically you don't need Accurate Rip at all. And if you're wondering what does it really matter, what exactly does not having the right offset translate to, well, about one second of audio data might sound different. That's it. But it's not perfect, and if you want perfect, you need to have it set correctly. Now with that in mind, you can actually manually set your offset value yourself if you know that value for your drive. So if you can't set up Accurate Rip for some reason, I will show you how to manually set your offset a little later on. For those of you that want 100% log files, you will need Accurate Rip enabled because having it disabled is a deduction, so you don't really have a choice. But for those that have no idea what those are or just don't care, don't worry about it, you're going to be able to rip perfect copies whether or not you activate Accurate Rip. Now, how do you set up Accurate Rip? Well, you need a CD drive, and you need at least one key disk. And a key disk is a CD that is inside of the Accurate Rip database. In some cases, you will need two or three key disks, but that's usually when your drive itself isn't in the database, and that's fairly uncommon. So how do you know if your CD is in the database? Well, you don't. But to increase your odds significantly, you would pick a CD from a popular artist, for example, someone you hear on the radio, and you'd want to make sure that that disc is at least six months old. And that's because it takes a while to populate the database. So if you get a brand new release from someone like Taylor Swift, it's still not going to pop up because it's brand new and it's not in the database yet. Now, you might have heard all this before and you tried a popular CD already and it still didn't pop up. And it's a little convoluted because very popular CDs that have a hundred different editions, something like a Pink Floyd CD, for example, will not pop up in the Accurate Rip database. And that's because there's too many pressings, there's too many variants. So you want to find a popular CD that isn't extremely popular and doesn't have a hundred different editions. You might have to borrow one from the library or ask a parent or relative, but you should be able to find one. That said, there is a whole bunch of reasons why, regardless of what CD you choose, Accurate Rip will not pop up, and we're now going to go through those. But I am assuming that you did at least try to put in a popular CD or a few of them, and nothing popped up. But if you haven't tried that yet, go ahead and do that. One thing to keep in mind, EAC needs access to the internet. So if you're ripping on an old computer because it's the only one that has access to a CD drive or something, keep in mind you need to get internet access to contact the Accurate Rip database. If you're using a firewall that only allows certain programs to access the internet, you're gonna to have to figure something out to allow EAC. And if you're on a virtual machine and it doesn't have access, you're gonna to have to give it access. Another easy to diagnose thing, look in the top left corner, make sure that you have the correct drive selected in the dropdown menu. Additionally, when you put a CD in your drive, EAC should have the CD appear like it does for me. It should at least have some kind of information here in the artist and the title section. It doesn't have to have actual data filled in, but you have to see something here. All these columns need to be filled out. If there's nothing here and it's completely blank, then it's likely that EAC can't read that disc. Maybe it's a blank CDR, or maybe it's just very damaged, but you're going to have to try a different CD instead because it can't read that one. Now there's actually a setting that you might have enabled that causes Accurate Rip not to appear in EAC, and that is beginner mode. To check whether or not you have beginner mode enabled, go to the top left corner, click EAC, EAC options, and then go to tools. The very bottom of tools, there is a activate beginner mode option. Make sure that is deselected. 
if it's already deselected, then that wasn't the problem. But if it wasn't deselected, deselect it, click OK, then you might have to restart EAC, and then the Accurate RIP pop-up should appear. One other thing, you might actually have Accurate RIP already enabled, and so of course the pop-up box is not going to appear. And you might think that's a little weird, but that's because DB Power Amp and EAC, they store your offset value in a registry key, and that persists even after you uninstall them. So if you've ever set up Accurate RIP once in the past with either DB Power Amp or EAC, it's still there. So to find that out, we're going to go into EAC, then Drive Options. We're then going to go to Offset and Speed. And if the top half is grayed out and you're able to activate Accurate RIP here, then you already have it set up. Now, another reason why it might not pop up is because you have WinFSP installed. And before you tell me that you don't have it installed, it is used in a lot of different programs, so you probably have it installed without knowing. Rclone, for example, or mounting network drives, or running a custom file explorer, they all use WinFSP, so make sure that you don't have it installed before you say so. Anyway, what it does is it causes the AC to crash when you open context menus, but in some cases it also makes the accurate rip pop-up not appear, and that's because it doesn't play nicely with the AC. And WinFSP said it was an EAC problem, so they didn't officially fix it, and EAC says it's a WinFSP problem, so they also didn't officially fix it. But there is a third-party bat script that will patch WinFSP to not crash with the AC, and will also make the accurate rip pop up appear. But I totally understand why someone would not want to run some sketchy shit that a YouTuber told them to. So if you need to, you can uninstall WinFSP, enable accurate rip, and then reinstall it. But for those of you that don't mind running the bat script, there will be a link in the description to this GitHub page. What you would do is you would download the bat script, you would move it to your WinFSP folder, and you would then double click it inside the WinFSP folder, you would then patch it so that it works properly with EAC, and then you might have to restart EAC and it should start working. Now there's some other reasons why the pop-up box will not appear, and they all involve your drive. Now let's say you physically own a drive, it's connected to your computer, but for some reason in the top left corner, the drive selection menu, it's just not there. Now it's possible that either the SATA port or the USB port is bad and you need to try a different SATA cable, different USB cable, a different port for your drive, or you're using like a hub of some sort, like a USB hub or something. Try to co connect directly into the PC. Try to make sure that your drive has enough power. Research if you need to use like some kind of external power for that drive. But if you're sure that's not the problem and there's still no drive here, there's two other reasons for that. One is you're using a virtual machine to run Windows and you messed up the pass through for your CD drive. It's not coming out correctly. I can't really help you with that. You're going to have to Google around for that. But basically, the drive should appear. But if you're running a virtual machine and it's not, something is misconfigured. The other thing is that you might be using remote access to access this device to rip your CDs. If that's the case, by default, you're not allowed to use the host drive with remote access. Now, specifically, this is RDP remote desktop, just to be clear. If you're using that, I'm going to show you how to enable the host drive. So we're going to open up the run command by clicking the Windows key and the R key. We're then going to type in gpedit.msc. We're then going to click OK. This is going to open up the group policy editor. We're then going to go to administrative templates and system, then removable storage, then all removable storage allow direct access and remote sessions. And we're going to click edit and we're then going to enable it. We're then going to click apply once we've enabled it. Although I'm not going to, but that's what you would do. And then you can close it. This should allow you to see your drive in the drop-down menu. This next one's a little bit of an honorable mention. EAC references a specific registry key to determine whether or not you have accurate RIP enabled for your drive. 
So when you enable accurate rip for the first time, it saves the registry key with certain values into a certain location. And then every time you open EAC, it looks for that registry key and it makes sure you have those values still. And then if you do, it lets you continue on as if you have accurate rip enabled. One of those values is a drive letter. So if your drive letter changes from D to F to G to H to whatever, if it continuously changes, you might be prompted to enable accurate rip multiple times. Aside from that, I guess it's possible that if you have no drive letter at all for the CD drive, enab enabling accurate rip might not be possible. But quite honestly, I don't think you could have no drive letter for a CD drive, so I don't think that's an issue. But anyways, I'm just going to open up registry editor just so you can see what the registry key looks like when you enable accurate rip for the first time. So we're inside of computer slash H key current user slash software slash illustrate and then in the DB power amp location. This will be in the description below, so don't worry about that. You don't have to hurry up and go and type it. But anyway, this is my offset. So it says CD drive sample offset and then it has my drive letter. It has the model, which is Dell, and then it has my model name for my drive. And then the value data shows my offset value. This is what EAC is looking for. D in particular is my drive letter. And if my drive letter changes, it might think that I have a different drive. Now, if you purge your registry keys, I don't know, monthly or something, you do some kind of weird stuff with your registry keys and they disappear. Deleting this value will make EAC think that you do not have accurate rip enabled. So I'm just going to do that real quick. I'm going to delete the value. I'm going to close EAC. I'm going to open it back up and I'm just going to show you real quick. It now causes the pop-up to appear again. Why is that? Well, it's looking for that registry key. And if it's not there, then this happens. So I'm just going to click close and I'm going to go to my drive options and I'm going to show you that it's not enabled. But a neat little trick is you can actually enable accurate rip without a disk at all. If you go into your registry key in that location that I showed you before, the DB power amp location, you click new D word 32 bit value, and you name it exactly what it's expecting your drive name to be. And then you modify it and you set the value data to your actual offset and click OK. And then you reopen EAC. I'm going to show you again. It's going to think that I have accurate rip enabled because it's looking specifically for that registry key. So as you can see, it, it thinks it's enabled, which means for the advanced users who run EAC in a VM or something, and you continuously delete your VM for whatever reason, if you take note of the exact name of the registry key, okay, so this specific name, and it has to be formatted like this with the, the extra spaces and shit. If you take note of this and you take note of your value, you can create your own and never have to use a key disk to enable accurate rip again if you want to. All right, we're at that point in the video where if you haven't set up accurate rip yet, you most likely can't right now. So here is how to manually set your own offset value. Go into the top left corner, click on EAC, then click drive options, then go to offset and speed. And then we're going to choose use read sample offset correction. And we're going to type in our drives offset number here. Whatever your drives offset number is, you would type it in. Mine is plus six and I know that. So I'm gonna type that in and then I'm gonna click okay. How did I find out that value? Well, I went to the drive offsets list itself. And I then typed in my drives model name, DW316. And I was able to find the Dell DW316 drive. And I can see my offset value right here is plus six. So the first column is my drives offset value. If my drive was the one right below it, the DW514, I would see that my drives offset value was plus 103 instead. So you would do the same thing. In EAC, you can easily see your drive model name right here. So mine is DW316 again, and that's what I typed in in this list. I found my offset value and I input it into the drives settings in the offset and speed, and that's it. You've basically emulated what Accurate Rip is doing, so you don't actually have to enable it like I said before, but that's about it. The list will be in the description below. If you have any questions or maybe you're trying to troubleshoot something, you can leave a comment below. I don't know if I'll be able to help you, but I will try. Thanks for watching and take care.